Hi guys, welcome back to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So today we're back with a Zaya commentary guide. And this much like the Ezreal commentary guide is kind of like a, not only a commentary guide, but also a prelude to the complete guide. So I do already have another gameplay which I'm gonna put into the Zaya complete guide, but this is sort of like a uh, preview and it's just like an in-depth um, gameplay explanation on how you play Zaya or whatever other champion I cover in um, the commentary guides. So let's just jump right into the gameplay and we'll talk more about builds, runes and so on in the actual um, Zaya complete guide which is coming out soon but here we're just going to focus on the gameplay itself first. So first thing that I want to point out about playing Zaya is generally if you're not playing with Rakan you take your Q at level 1. You only take W at level 1 if you're playing with, with Rakan. I don't really see any other scenario to take your Q. Now this of course I will cover again when I'm talking about the leveling order in the complete guide. But uh, I think I would like to point this out. Reason is because um, part of the Zaya strategy which I did not realize when I first started playing Zaya is the fact that you should be spamming your Q and your W in lane as much as possible. Now the general logic for majority of the characters is you only want to use your skills if you're attacking the enemies or for a specific reason. For example, you only want to be using your Ezreal Q to be poking your, the enemies unless you're using it to clear minions at range. But Zaya wants to be just spamming her abilities in lane basically whenever they're up. Zaya as an AD carry is pretty unique in the sense that she doesn't really have mana issues like uh, Misfortune or even Ezreal sometimes if, if you don't go like mana flow ban and uh, mana mute. He does have mana issues but Zaya uh, rarely has mana issues. In fact even if you keep on spamming unless you don't recall for a very very long time generally you'll never run out of mana. So if you guys see here basically I'm spamming my Q whenever it's up to just clear the wave and also because the reason you want to spam your abilities is not to be pushing the wave permanently of course because you do want to have some wave control although generally when I play Zaya I like pushing the wave but the reason that you want to spam your abilities like me is, is if you guys can see whenever you use your abilities you gain stacks of feathers um, under your health bar and that is part of Zaya's passive so now Zaya's E causes uh, opponents to be rooted if they get hit by three or more feathers. So basically, um, by spamming your abilities, you're getting feathers on the ground and you're basically zoning the enemy away from minions because basically, if the enemy step up and walk towards the minions to see as you can get off a route and basically get a free trade on them because they're rooted, they can't do anything about it. Also before that, let's cut it off here, Braum with a very unsafe recall. Um, he shields the wrong way, he dashes back to his minions for some reason. Nami exhausts and I flash to get the uh, I, I, unnecessary flash, I might add, and Nami gets the kill. <laughs> so uh, that was um, an oops by the Brahm. Um, not sure what he was doing there. He puts up his shield in the wrong direction, dashes back towards the minions, and recalls it an unsafe spot. Three uh, mistakes in a row. So here I'm just poking at the, at the Kai'Sa a bit with and also getting my root off with my E. So as I was saying, is if you guys can see here, I'm, I'm putting all my feathers on the ground. So the Zaya, I'm sorry, the Kai'Sa here, she can't really walk up. Like you see, the Brahm has walked up over there. He instantly gets rooted. He gets bubble, Wombo comboed and hit by basically everything. I have to ult to get the kill, which is normally not what you want to do. But here we do get the kill on both of the bot laners. I get the root on the Trindomir for the disengage and we basically escape safely. So this is what I'm referring to. This is a perfect example. So by place, by spamming our Q's and W's and placing feathers on the ground, we are, we are effectively zoning our enemies away from the minions. So basically what we're saying is, I get to clear minions and you don't get to clear minions. If you want to clear minions and you step up, we get a free trade against you. And in this case, that free trade led to a combo with the bubble by Nami and then Brahm had to force the ultimate to disengage but it wasn't even enough because um, Nami got off her own ultimate which allowed us to get the kill on the Brahm and then the Kai'Sa was in no man's land trying to follow up or trying to help the Brahm I should say and then she just dies and here we get another kill on her because she was out of position uh, unnecessary flash by Namundo uh, basically doing the same thing as me <laughs> just now so that is basically the entire reason why you always want to spam 
Zaya's Q and W. You always want to get feathers on the ground so enemies cannot walk up. If they walk up, they get rooted and you get either a free trade or it gets converted into a kill. Because Zaya is one of the few AD carries that does have CC. Although, the thing about Zaya is, Zaya relies a lot of, uh, on enemy mistakes. Because if the enemies never misposition and never walk between you and the feathers, you can basically never get the root off. But even in high elo, uh, in the late game, in messy team fights, most people are not really taking note of where your feathers are and are more concerned about either dealing the damage, escaping the fight, or something else that is not thinking about where you are in correlation to your feathers. So majority of the time, you can still get roots off in the late game. But if uh, in higher elo in the early game, it's really hard to get roots off on your lane opponent because majority of people would know how to play against Zaya and they would not step up. Um, and get rooted, they'll just let the minions push and then they would clear the minions. That's what I do when I play against Zaya. I'll just let her, uh, uh, if she's playing it correctly, which which is um, spamming her abilities, I would just let her clear the minions first like this. And when the minions come to my tower like this, assuming I was the Bram Kaisa, then I would clear because it would be really safe for me to do so here. Um, whereas if I step up outside of my tower range and like into the actual lane where all the feathers are, then I risk getting rooted and you know, we all we obviously don't want that. So that's basically how you play against Zaya. But Zaya in lane uh, is not the strongest and pretty much relies on opponent's mistakes like that. So I uh, I have already set up feathers with the with the Q there. Brahm steps up again. I auto attack for the third feather behind him, and of course I press my E. Of course Nami with an amazing bubble there. So we do get another kill on the Brahm. So at this point we're we're starting to get really fat. We have our gluttonous griefs completed. We have our infinity edge completed, and we are 302 at the moment. So we're we're doing pretty good. So the thing is that Zaya, if your opponents make mistakes in lane, or if you manage to rotate and get kills, of course she does very well. She scales really well into the late game, but in this case Kaisa does as well. So that is something to notice. We're both pretty um, late game carries, but. Um, Kaisa plays more like an assassin who can dive the backline and burst people. Uh, Zaya is really safe with her ultimate. So here, uh, originally we wanted to rotate on the train number. We rotated over. We see that his rage is nearly full, and we we were having none of it. So we just uh, we just get uh, we just retreat out, uh, over there. It's not a good idea to fight the train number with the full rage, especially with a gap closer. He can just run me and Nami down. So we don't want that, of course. So I'm back to the laning phase strategy of just spamming my abilities, placing my feathers on the ground. So as you can see, Z uh, Kaisa can't really do too much here. Nami, another amazing bubble. Uh, Trindamir shows up here, so we have to uh, both out to disengage. So here I'm gonna have to flash a barrier, but uh, it's too late. I, I do um, die there, so a little bit too cocky, a little bit overextended. Uh, obviously that was a mistake on, on our part, and I did just say just now that um, Trindamir can just run us down, which is why we did not want to engage on him at the river. So. Um, definitely not a good idea to push the tower when we know Trindamir is in the area. Um, my assumption was that Trindamir took the skull crap and rotated away, but instead Trindamir took the skull crap and of course since we were overextended, logically he came for a gank. So just now Zed flashed away from us when he showed up, he's gonna do that again. Uh, because of course we are still fat despite the fact that we died once and Zed is really overextended. Now our fizz in this game um, did, did just kill the Zed, but our friends in this game is not really good at um, protecting his mid lane towers. And the mid lane towers in the earlier stages of the game are the most important towers, so he doesn't really protect the mid lane towers at all. He just lets the opponent push and he's rotating somewhere else, or he's dead, or some or something like that. So basically, the opponents get a lot of free, uh, get the two free mid lane towers, more or less, uh, if you guys have seen. So in the meantime, Nami does get the top lane tower that we uh, have chunked out. Uh, significantly just now so in the meantime where we we rotate over to bot lane as you guys can see to help out basically and now we're going back to just clear the wave before rotating again because we already have the top lane tower and of course the dragon is is up and it has been untouched by both teams so far for the entire first nine minutes of the game of course the enemy team is doing the dragon so um, Nami gets a relatively all right Ultimate, we get the root on a lot of people, and Mundo does get the steal, which is amazing. So, uh, as you can see here, this is one of the so-called hectic uh, team fights. Uh, here, we outplayed the Zaya there. She she could have killed us, but we ultimate, so we were, we were untargetable. So, this is one of those so-called hectic late game team fights that I like to that I'm really really referring to. So, 
Um, they're all focusing on getting the dragon. They're focusing on smiting the dragon, focusing on focusing the dragon. Uh, just pretty much not focusing on me and my feathers. So I, I do manage to get off a ton of uh, feathers. And because of that, they, I, I do get the root off on a lot of them. And also, uh, in case you guys didn't know, Zaya's main source of damage is actually her E. She maxes her E and her main source of damage is her E. So here, uh, we, we, we thought that uh, we overextend again, so we do make the same mistake for the second time. So here, the assumption that me and Nami had was that mid was also getting pushed in. So our assumption was that they, they were going to defend mid instead of coming to defend top. Obviously, poor assumption, really bad gameplay from me and Nami. So this is uh, making the same mistakes for the second time in the match. Now the mistake here, obviously, don't overextend, don't greet for towers, which is what we do twice. So uh, really looks, looks bad, really... No, not not a good example there of what you should be doing, especially when we're ahead. We're pretty much throwing a little bit. So at this point, uh, I, I basically got run down by Trinity twice at this point, leading to my two deaths. So I'm gonna get a Zanyas to stall a bit of time. I'm gonna get myself an Executioner's Calling to uh, stop their healing. There's quite a bit of healing on their team. Ka Kaisa has uh, Blade of the Rune King. Uh, Trinamir has his has his Q, and Fiora has her passive. So quite a quite a bit, not not a ton, but quite a bit of healing. So I'm still spamming my my feathers. So pretty much I'll be doing this, and you should be doing this the entire game, not just in the laning phase. You always want to spam your, your feathers. You never know when an enemy is around. So um, if you're an, if an enemy ever shows up like that, you always have feathers on the ground that you can use. So here, as you guys can see, I root for the disengage. I get get out of dodge, and then I can go with my team to re-engage. Over here, we're on the chase. Um, as you can see, this is a pretty messy fight because uh, we're chasing the Kai'Sa here, and we do get the kill on the Kai'Sa. She does ultimate to stay alive a little longer. If she got off her passive there, probably I would have died, but thankfully we killed her fast enough. And then I'm just gonna get get out of there, basically. Actually, I'm gonna take the red buff to try to life steal a little bit because the, the fight is still ongoing between my team and them. It's a three v three at the moment, so I'm I'm using my gluttonous greaves as well as my ravenous hunter rune to sort of life steal back to an uh. Uh, pretty much slightly over half health or so, but uh, by the time I get there, the fight is over. So instead, I'll take the honey fruit, then I'll clear the wave, and that's about it. So here, I'm probably gonna push again, aren't I? So I might be making the same mistake for the third time, but I'm gonna be pushing um, the tower uh, here. But this time though, we do have vision. As you can see, we got a ward in the river bush, we got a ward in the enemy jungle, so we can actually see the enemies coming, and, and we see Brahm coming and. Uh, in uh, from lane of course and so we don't uh, we don't continue pushing of course we don't know who else is coming to back up the Brahm so we're just gonna leave it at that here we're taking the Krux because we're really uh, close to getting our items you can see our goal and we have about we, we have a uh, 2,000 gold now and before that we had about like 180 or so so we just need that little bit more to get the moral reminder so we're gonna back now we're gonna get the moral reminder um, like that so we're just taking the Krugs to get the moral reminder. So and a small tip for you guys is that uh, most of the time, especially in the later stages of the game, not so much in the early stages of the game, but in the later part of the game, the jungler will not have time to be taking his entire top and bomb site jungle. So feel free to take the parts of the jungle that he did. And normally he doesn't take the Krug, sometimes he doesn't take the Raptors because he pretty much the only two important parts uh, are the buffs. So here we don't even get an assist, I think, because our our attack isn't fast enough here. So here we're gonna convert the kill on the Kaisa to the dragon. The Kaisa isn't doing too hot this game because uh, she's been making some poor decisions, overextending quite a bit. And here, me and Nami time our E and our ultimate just uh, so that if anyone tries to attempt uh, uh by anyone, I mean the Trinimir attempts to come in for the steal, he's gonna get he's gonna get hit by everything. So uh, you could count it as a waste of the Nami ultimate, but I think it's fine. It's a good uh, deterrence and a good precautionary measure to just throw out in case the Trinimir decides to E over the wall. That would interrupt his his E and um, secure us the dragon. So here, Fizz hits the ultimate on the Z. Z gets hit by the bubble as well, and pretty much just is just gone. So here I'm I I bring my team to retreat, but then I realize oh actually we can just kill the kill the Kaisa because I see the rotation here and this is what I was afraid of but turns out that our, uh, that our team has a about a 6k goal lead so we're doing pretty fine uh, it's not too much of concern Nami and Fizz are, are low so we're gonna back off instead of, actually we're not gonna back off we're gonna get the inhib or try to get the inhib at least yeah, so we're gonna get the inhib here now we're gonna back off I'm still uh, fully healthy so I'm just trying to clear out the wave 
uh, but not being overly overly uh, aggressive. Uh, like I didn't, I just left the cannon minion instead of clearing it because you know you never you never know. So here I'm gonna rotate over to help the Teemo out to take this tower, but the Teemo uh, apparently wants to recall instead of taking taking the tower. So I'm gonna take the tower by myself, and Brom rotates over to save his tower yet again. So Brom is pretty, uh, and I'm hunting. Brom is pretty map aware. He he always comes to to defend his tower, which is good good on it, good on him. So here, um, Mundo is pinging for Baron, because we we do want to actually get the Baron. Of course, we're we're pretty ahead. We're eight k ahead, so we can actually force the Baron. But here we are gonna actually get into a fight. Mundo gets legendary, kills the Kaisa off again. Here I'm um, uh, Zed and. Fizz are having one one so here I'm gonna try to help the Namiya. So I tried to actually uh, E there to get the root before Fiora managed to kill the Namiya. But unfortunately that that um, that didn't go too well. So Nami died before I could root the Fiora and Mundo dies as well. So only Fizz, me and Timor are left. So um, not a really good spot to be in. Here I'm gonna take the red buff again. Uh, recall get some items. So Fizz uh, pushing up way too far, especially since none of them are there. To, uh, none of us are there to back him up, and uh, three of our team members are dead. So Fizz um, goes down as well. So here I'm pretty much just suspecting enemy will be going for Baron. Now of course we can't. I can't see enemy walking towards Baron, so I'm just gonna ward the Baron. Uh, uh, enemy team apparently doesn't have any sweepers, so I'm just hiding in this bush here. Zed comes up. I don't want to get ulted and combo by him, so I pretty much just run away. Mundo. Uh, teleporting, pinging on his way, so I'm going in, going in in the Mundo. Uh, Mundo gets an amazing Baron steal. Now this this basically wins us the game. He gets an amazing Baron steal. Um, I come for the fight, kill off one of them. I get the ultimate to to uh, um, negate Zed's damage. So Zed ulted me. So now this is a thing you can do. So here, uh, before that, we get a quadra kill like that. So what you can do is that if Zed ults you and you don't want to Zhonya's the ult, you can actually just use your own ult because Zed's ult gives more damage based on based on how much damage he hits you between his ult, applying his ult and his ult popping. So you can actually you can actually just simply just uh, use your ult so he doesn't get any damage on you and then that pretty much negates his ultimate. So now here we're gonna take a look at the stats. Alright, so first look at the KDA. So as you guys can see, we are 9 2 3. The two deaths came from us overextending, completely uh, av avoidable. Uh, we do get the MVP though, and of course we get a quadra kill, highest team fight participation, uh, most target damage, most goal, most kills. Uh, 20 out of 29, not bad. So our team um, generally does well. Uh, Mundo. Uh, with a pretty good build. So, uh, however, I find the warmarks er, uh, early warmarks a little bit questionable. Um, Timo does go for the correct build this time, uh, d um, different from the other Timos that we saw. And Trinamir actually does the most champion damage now. Gotta give it to Trinamir. That's really respectable. He um, did out damage me, as we're gonna take a look at later. But um, between us, the rest of the enemy team, the, their builds are all generally. Uh, generally correct. Even the Kaisa goes for the rush build, but now we're gonna take a look at the actual stats. So, Trainer did out uh, damage me by about five hundred damage, which is pretty pretty sad. Uh, didn't get that medal. Um, Mundo, despite building tank, does a lot of damage, just running uh, people down. Uh, this Timo did all right. Fizz did did all right. The two of them uh, weren't too too good, I guess. I guess Minami and the Mundo played the best. Nami had hit so many so many good bubbles um, in this match. So um, Trindamir, honestly, he did really well for a Trindamir. Uh, considering how poor Trindamir um, is as a champion, um, Zaya did do a decent amount of damage despite. Um, uh, not playing too well, honestly. She took nearly as much damage as the Mundo, which basically shows that she is um, out of position and and you know uh, dying a lot of, of the time. But yeah, so that's it for this video, guys. Uh, look out for the Zaya complete guide coming up soon. Thanks for watching the video and bye.